Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Previously, we continued examining the room where Kazuma Asogi was killed in, and we also spoke at length with one Herlock Sholmes, who is a bit... Um, he... It's very hard to derail him once he starts going, and he is very wrong in a lot of assumptions. Anyway, he read Kazuma's last diary entry, which mentioned a speckled band dangling from the air vent in the room, so Herlock went to the next room over, which would be, I assume, this door right here. And Ryunosuke managed to talk his way into getting permission to examine the rest of the crime scene, which is out in the hallway and maybe in this other room too, so... Let's start looking around. What is this mouse trap? Ah, a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what it's called. Cheese. It's made from the milk cows. Oh, yeah, that's right. Boy, the Japanese did not have cheese until relatively recently, historically speaking. Oh, what a nightmarish existence. Cheese. I wonder what that tastes like. How about you pick that one up and see see what it's like, Ryunosuke? Just, just pick it up from the floor trap. Just do that. You can't eat it, Naruhodo-san. The trap will snut shut, uh, snap shut on your fingers. Oh man. Spoil sport. Really? But... Uh, I suppose you're right. You weren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Kazuma's leftovers. You don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Poor you. I'll find a little snack for you later. Oh, that's nice. First class cabin number one. Yes, that's our cabin. Not our cabin. It's Kazuma Sama's son. Ugh. Sorry, sometimes I get tongue twisted with these names. Kazuma Sama's. Sorry? Your accommodation is confined to the wardrobe inside the cabin. You know how to make a stowaway feel small, don't you? As small as the wardrobe I've been calling home. These cabins are the finest on the ship. My own cabin is in steerage is number 539, by the way. 500 and... How many cabins are there? Hm. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? That's the emergency alarm. It's probably, be the, probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this I have to see. What are you doing, Naruhodo-san? You mustn't touch it. But this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. Ah, uh, I wish everything would just stop. The ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. <laughs> Fair enough. And this is it. This is the cabin next to ours, the one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe who's ever in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. Yeah, I thought so. Oh, um... Excuse me, we, um, need to get inside this cabin here.
The sailor's eyes speak volumes. They're clearly saying, keep out. That's what I wrote on the sign we put up on the wardrobe doors. Although this man's version is definitely more effective. It doesn't look like he's going to let us pass. Uh, that's a problem. This looks like a plan of the SS Burya. It shows each deck, look. The Burya is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering. Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but... How is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhodo-san. It is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than this ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. They don't... Islands don't... They don't actually float. Well, I suppose so. <laughs> That's a huge book on top of the table there. And there's a pen next to it. Yes, that looks like the ship's log. Shall we have a little look through it? The writing is so neat and precise. Every detail about the voyage has been meant meticulously recorded. Ah, you wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. And nothing, no reaction at all. I thought he might appreciate the compliment. I'm not sure that rough and ready is much of a compliment, Naruhodo-san, even to a sailor. Anyway, last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there was nothing to report. Hmm. That's why it is the second class area of the ship. Is something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it, just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door, that burly seaman would surely shoot you dead. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started it with my talk of running away. There's no way I could run away while Kazuma's death remains a mystery anyway. And that brings us to this man. Um, excuse me, but could I ask you something? You, you little stowaway murderer. That wasn't a good start, was it? All right, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? You, you little third-class lady's maid. Oh. We seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, Susato-san. I am not sailor. My mother gave me name. I am senior crewman Biff Stroganov. Sure. Isn't that a kind of food? Oh my god. It's not Biff, it's Beef. 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 Stro uh, okay. <laughs> Phew. The best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. Um. I can't actually show him anything yet. All right. Um, Mr. Stroganov, about this first-class cabin area. Here we are in finest part of Burya steamship for very important persons. 
What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. That is why I'm always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean. But Stroganov is not animal. Thank you. If I may, I was wondering. Is the cabin next to Mr. Asogi's currently occupied? Da? Um, Susato-san, did you understand that? It sounded like da. I think it's probably Russian for yes or no. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, it sounds like there is somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Asogi's? His name is Mr. Grimsby Roylott. He is a very important Western gentleman. Or maybe that's Grimsby. A Western gentleman? Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can he be so sure about that? Mr. Roylott is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East islands. That was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Roylott came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now, and I've been in Cosmic's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin, or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganov? Duh, all time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. Well, that's really interesting, then. This guy's definitely covering something up. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Het? Oh, Niet. Um, Susato-san, did you understand that? It was clearly a no. Oh my god, I just I just realized his sunburn pattern makes him look like he was on a grill. Like you would cook beef. Alright. I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. You didn't hear any strange noises? Or sense anything was wrong in some way? I said no. Sorry. I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. This is enough. I cannot say more now. Oh. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Yes, all right. Bulkhead to second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or, as English say, when the pigs fly. 
Is that really a phrase the Germans have? Or Russians? Sorry. Uh, yes, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Move. Oh, we need to look first. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There is no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah! What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman. Stand aside? Where did you come from? I thought you were in there. I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes. I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off their hinges. Please, wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What, pray, can I kick? Rinosuke, start running. I, I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. That is the most Russian man I have ever seen in my goddamn life. <laughs> Does this count as a caricature? Also, the first thing that jumps out to me is... The identical bookshelf with the toppled statue. Wow, there's a lot that's similar in the cabins, but I guess that makes sense. This man's holding scissors? Wait, is this... No, this is not the villain dude. No, the mustache is completely different. Who... who are you? A western gentleman? This man looks Russian to me. Uh, we heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. True. This old man does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out! All of you, now! Please excuse the intrusion, but you're Mr. Grimsby Roylot, I believe. Yes, that's me. And you are? I'm the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I'm a great detective among great detectives. One who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. The man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective. Hmm. I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might I be so bold as to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionably these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk? Don't look at me. Huh? Oh my! Did... did you see that, Mr. Naruhodo? 
Yes, the case just shook. Leave. Now. Otherwise, I'll call the steward. So this is Cosimo's neighbor, Mr. Grimsby Roylott. There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that birdly sailor returns. Well, oh, wow, okay. Just going right into it then. I suppose we should talk to him first. I can't show him stuff, that's a shame. Mr. Roylott, we'd like to talk to you about something. No. Oh. I do not want to talk. Leave my cabin now. Ah, this is going terribly. We're not getting anywhere here. I agree, but there may be someone else who can help. Perhaps the great detective could get somewhere with Mr. Roylott. This is gonna be a thing with him, isn't it? Mr. Roylott, we'd like to talk to you about something. Oh, alright. Fair enough, I see. Oh, presenting is a different thing then. Alright. Mr. Roylott, uh, what do you make of this? Listen. Do you know why I'm wearing these dark glasses? Um, no? Not really? So I do not have to look at things I do not want to look at. Do you understand me? I wish I could point out that you can still see things even when wearing sunglasses. But this chilly air has frozen my lips shut. How about this man, Villain Borshevik? We have this Russian newspaper here. I have the same newspaper in my cabin. Maybe they gave it to all first-class passengers. Well, neither of us speak a word of Russian, so we can't read it at all. Would you mind telling us what this article is about? If you do not speak Russian, you do not need to know what it is saying. Ugh, Russia must be a cold, cold place. How about, uh... The Ballerina? Same thing. Fair enough. I guess we'll examine. Well... Let's save that for last. Why is there a plate neatly put on the floor. What do you think you're doing? Ah! This is my cabin. Get out. Could we just have a quick look inside your traveling case, perhaps? No. Ah, uh, what a pity. I think we're out of luck. I think you're right. There doesn't appear to be anything more we can do. I agree, but there may be someone else who can help. Alright, game, I get the message. Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed. I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh! And it would seem that the hour is upon us now. That time has come. Am I mistaken? 
Well, um, no, actually, you're spot on for once. Observe closely. There's something crumpled in his pocket. Our Russian host is in, in this cabin. Mr. Roylott is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why, the truth, of course. Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh, yes, please. Well then, what you are about to see may well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? Honestly, no. What? From time to time, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubiousness? Uh, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you, or anyone. That's right, and Mr. Sholmes? I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read, it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shush, I must have complete silence. Oh, what are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? Ah, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Huh? Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylott, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. What? What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Huh. And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn. You are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? I... Oh, Naruhoro-san, I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shom's great, great deductions with my own eyes. That... was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? What ineffable twaddle. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now, I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color has drained from Mr. Roylott's face. Yeah, I noticed that. He's purple behind the glasses. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholm's conclusions were right. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such things, you wish to say? Very well then, I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Ooh! 
This is a game mechanic thing. Hello. Old man's identity. So, the dubious looking Russian Mr. Roylot. Obviously, what catches the eye in the first place? Oh my god, I love this. Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand? Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. Now, moving on. The question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper. In particular, the fascinating front page article. Which, it would appear, you have read also, Mr. Roylott. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary villain Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. They look nothing alike. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, villain Bolshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. Now, as for my second conclusion... You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime, over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roylott. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Oh. And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloqu eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crimes is before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation, a young lady, perhaps. One slight enough to fit therein. D don't be absurd. And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup de duel betrays you. Coup de what? Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can equally be found in the pages of this newspaper. For there is another most stimulating article. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova.
Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma, Elementsky. Bravo. Bravo. Susato-san, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Shom's brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here a moment? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's this newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Ah, uh, yes, I recall our discussion earlier, and at the time I believe I told you that the man is a revolutionary, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roylott does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. And another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revelation. <clears throat> at first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it is too small, clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is fifteen. No, I didn't know. How could I? Huh. Well, if she's fifteen, then ten years worth of her would be poking out from the case. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain lightness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, uh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. Mr. Naruhodo, something's occurred to me about Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes get at the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seem a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Miss Usato. It's just one or two keywords in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tact tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Ah, uh, switch some keywords in his deductions? Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Sholm's great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my own mind. This man is a lot of work. At times I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. Ah, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? Huh? Ah, where are your handcuffs? Huh? How, how, how did... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. I don't believe it.
Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel! And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. <laughs> Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylot. Obviously, what catches the eye in the first place? It's the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away that copious beard you sport. Huh, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylot, either. Which means, I suppose, that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a keyword here, Naruhodo-san, and see if it helps matters. Alright, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylot. I wonder if it's really his beer that he intended to use those shears on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Sholm's deduction better... Then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruhodo-san. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in that last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Roylot really going to use those enormous shears for? Hmm... The thick hat? Copious beard? Oh! Hello! Oh, stop the world, I want to get off! Okay. Well, I want to, like, coat buttons? No, I want to look at the newspaper. I think he's going to cut the newspaper, but... Wait, what? Golden locks, you say? I thought this was a scarf. You know what? You know what? I, I should have said it. I should have said it. During this whole spiel, I... I had the tiniest glimmer of a what-if thought. You're the ballerina, aren't you? That's a fake nose, a fake beard. Oh my god. <laughs> what the... what's this? It... it looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks. Uh, no, 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 the color is not the point. The point is, what's it doing on the back of Mr. Roylot's head? And how is it growing out from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that's true. So it's stunningly beautiful and stunningly surprising. Something's definitely not right here. Oh, that's nice. We can actually examine things before we present. Yes! Ah, oh, cool. Ryonosuke, you're not cool enough to do that yet. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. 
Indeed. You, may, you have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. Such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair... One still very much in her youth. Oh no. If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that old man was really a young woman in disguise, did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise, Naruhodo-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing facts with Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I I'm not having fun or anything, but Baka. This is strictly business. Uh, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts at all now. No, that's true, given that Mr. Roylott is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though I've ever either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Alright, I'll do my best. The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right, you've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Well, yeah, that's Novovich. I don't know. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the Novavik Baller Ballet's Prima Ballerina. Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Where'd all the padding in your coat go? Suddenly that trench coat is form-fitting, kinda. You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing the most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime, over there. Oh yes, Miss Pavlova. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. 
Ah! Uh. And I assure you the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. Okay, two things jump out of me. There was a plate on the ground. Not unlike a dog's dish. And two, her name is friggin' Pavlova. There's a little dog in her suitcase. I'm the real Herlock Sholmes, baby. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crimes is before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. This woman is the ballerina, and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside that traveling case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? Uh, I can see I'm going to have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. You seem to look pleased, Naruhodo-san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it! Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. The plate... plate oh! Look at that shiny-ass tiara! Wow, look at this dazzling tiara! All right! Her whole thing is that she's, she stole this, uh, like, 20k ruble crown, that's right. It is pretty. I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, Naruhodo-san, try it on. What? Me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Yes! The proof of your crime is surely this tiara. Ah! I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novavik Ballet, is it not? Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary... The crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. I have no one, no family, no friends. I am all alone, and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say, an Earl of Prussia. It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old, and she's run away all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. All right, I will tell you everything. There is no point to hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? Oh, what do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish to remain it closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My dear girl, there is no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. 
Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have even laid eyes on them. Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup de duel betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answers. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the books on the shelf. He's completely changed tact with his deduction now. I think Mr. Sholmes is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Uh, maybe, but why has he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still... Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. And there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. And it must be somewhere in the same area if that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. Whatever she has hidden inside that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. Really? Well, what about this warning? These are the rules of passage for the travel for travel aboard the SS Burya. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Uh... <laughs> mm. Who's the ace detective? It's me. It's me, it's Zephyr. Don't you forget it. There was exactly the same notice in our cabin, too. I wonder what happens if you break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment would be severe, Naruhodo-san. You'd probably be left to drift in the freezing cold ocean. Or shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. So I've actually been serving time for weeks now, have I? Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage in the vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time. But no weapon or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova. Inside your traveling case... ...is the last item listed as forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage. A pet. I want to see the cute doggy. I bet it's a Bichon Frise. Solved! Hell yeah. I wonder if there are any, like, penalties for getting something wrong. I'm surely going to discover that firsthand later in this playthrough. So, clearly you aren't who you said you were. No, I am not Grimsby Roylott. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Ah, uh, well... 
at this time we're just ticking over to one hour, I do believe, so... Uh, this is probably the best place I have to end things. Oh, what can I say other than... Mwah! Chef's kiss. Mm. We are taking full advantage of 3D. They took the concept of 3D and ran with it. Oh, the presentation is so good. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun and I look forward to, um, to more instances of that in the future. Yeah, I'm guessing this one was painfully obvious to begin with, but oh man, there I'm probably gonna be real truly stumped in the in the future, the far future. Oh, like this game's final case. Ooh, probably gonna be a doozy or two in there. <laughs> but I will say, um Doing voices for Sholmes is surprisingly draining. I feel particularly exhausted for how much I had to voice him. But I hope I'm doing an alright job by your standards. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess there's no denying it. This case of the missing girl with the absconded tiara. Yeah, she... Uh, we're gonna deal with this mystery here and now, but the question is, how does that even tie into the death of Kazuma? And is the revolutionary villain, is he even actually on board for real? At the very least, he's not in first class. Which is curious. I just have the biggest, widest, stupidest grin on my face, ear to ear. Oh, I love Ace Attorney, man. God, man, like, like, geez, what is this? Like the the seventh game I'm playing? Yeah, this would be the seventh. No, no, uh, eighth. This is the eighth Ace Attorney game I'm playing, and man, it feels like each one is better than the last. God, I, I might just even have to say that maybe Ace Attorney could crack my top five favorite game franchises of all time. Look, okay, look, I, I know, I know it's, um, I know I'm saying I really love it, but there's no way I'm, it's ever gonna dethrone the likes of Dark Souls or, um, Dragon Quest. But top five, yeah, probably. <laughs> just a delight just a constant ceaseless delight even when it's painful even when I'm groaning in agony even when I'm forced to spend a lot of time with the likes of characters like Lot of Heart uh. but hey if every pork chop were perfect we wouldn't have hot dogs you gotta have the bad to make the good shine alright that's how it is I'm Zephyr the Jester, this has been more The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.